What's up, girls? Welcome back to another episode of Call Her Holy. I'm Laura Eldridge. And I'm Nicoletta Bradley. Was I whispering? <laughs> I mean, in that moment? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm whispering for some, maybe because it's my daughter's asleep in the other room. Probably. Colby and I have this thing where we literally will like, we'll be so far away from Oakley and she's sleeping, but we'll still be like whispering. And it's like, we don't have to whisper. Like, she can't hear us. She's nowhere close. But we just feel the need to whisper. See, I don't ever think about these things because I don't have a child. But Mike, does she sleep with a sound machine? Yeah. Okay, why do kids sleep with sound machines? I actually have no idea. Uh, Okay, there's probably some more answers to this. But I would say because distraction, like noise. You know what I mean? Okay. I think it's just a lot easier for them. It's soothing. I sleep with earplugs. There's the whole shushing technique. Like shushing is really soothing to babies. And so they've made little shushers that will go shh, shh. There's like literally a baby shusher. They asked me to read, they reached out to me for an ad and here's their ad because this was, <laughs> I, I never answered them, but um, like, does it work? It's yeah. Yeah. Then when you, you, you can like literally shush a baby to sleep. So I think it's kind of mimicking that it's kind of like soothing. What's really funny is like, I've heard multiple parents say this and now Colby does like the sound machine starts for the baby. And then it's like, now it becomes for the parents. <laughs> like now you can't sleep without it. Like Colby loves sleeping with the sound machine now. Really? I don't care, but he like sleeps with the sound See, machine. Now. I have to have dead silence. Like I sleep with earplugs. I sleep with eye patches. I sleep with blackout shades. Now I literally just got blackout shades like a week ago. But I'm like, I like it. Dead silent. <laughs> is that weird? Is that like a serial no. killer trait? <laughs> no. Do you sleep with a fan on? Yeah. Me too. Two I fans. A fan. Two fans? Yeah, but I can't hear it. Cause you can't because you have the earplugs in? Yeah. Oh, that is funny. Yeah, so like I've got noise happening, but your girl cannot hear it. I'm pretty chill, I think. I'm kind of like a sleep anywhere kind of girl. Mm, but I'm also, this is funny because like I'm up in the middle of the night. People, I like have weird, I always like wrote my songs in the middle of the night when I was in the music world. What do you I'd think like, about in the middle I'd, of the night? I don't know. I like pop up at night. Hey, Shady, I won't be around for too long. <laughs> I would just write a song. Mm. You know? I had a dream that I made out with my um, high school best guy friend last night. That was my dream. You were asleep, though. Yeah, but then I woke up and was like, oh, my gosh, I would never kiss him in a million years. And then I went back to sleep. Do you have weird dreams? No. Like, I've been having, I've been waking up recently and being like, honestly, I I don't have time to process this dream. You know what I mean? I've been having so many, like, so many things just happened last night. And emotionally, I haven't caught up, aka in my dreams. Like, that was a lot to go through. Do you think it's because you're pregnant? Probably because I'm pregnant. Is that, like, normal? Uh, yeah, I think sometimes weird dreams can happen when you're pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some it's probably like the supplements I'm taking and stuff like that. Yeah. But some of it I think is like, um, you know, when you have stuff you're processing through in real life, your body and you haven't like caught up processing it, your body actually tries to process it. Is that actually true? Your mind. I think so. Huh. I've never thought that. I haven't like fact checked it, but. I'd be curious. I think so. You know what I mean? Okay. You know what's interesting? And maybe this is TMI. I always have like really like. Not like super scandalous dreams, but around my period. I always have like where I'm making out with an ex-boyfriend. Is that like normal? <laughs> well, you have a husband, so maybe no, not. No, it's probably because your um, hormones. hormones. I actually have been leaning into dreams lately a little bit more of like, I think there's something God's trying to tell me because I started reading the story of Joseph and like his dreams and some of these other things were happening. And I'm like, okay, I think there really could be stuff that God's trying to tell me through my dreams. Now, I think you gotta be careful because I think the enemy can use it and that kind of thing too. But I've but read- also you can be wonky and like say like, oh, I had a dream and so I know this to be true. Right, so that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about even like that, but I'm okay. I'm saying like there's almost like a feeling of there's something here to lean into either something for me to process, you know, that I'm not processing in my awake hours or like sometimes like in marriage, like it'll be a good connection point where like I'll have a dream and I'll be like, okay, I need to like talk to Colby and like, you know, check in on him or things like that. And so has the Lord ever spoken to you through dreams? Uh, probably because I've like heard of people, whether that be in a podcast or in real life of like, I had a dream and God told me these things and I have prayed for that and it's never happened. I'm trying to think because I've had more like visions like you've had. And it's like Callie said it on an episode that hasn't come out yet, but she said the word imaginative prayer. And it was kind of more of like what it was. But 
I remember this guy that I was dating okay. and I like kind of had Did this. Did he say that you were his wife in his dream? <laughs> no, no. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I have never had a guy say in my dreams, but I have had a guy say, God told me on my car ride that you're my wife. And I'm like, you know, clearly I'm not because you are now married. Thank you. Listen, almost every AMA Monday, which AMA stands for ask me anything. <laughs> Abigail just asked me. So I'm like, maybe people don't know on Instagram. Every time almost somebody asks me like, Hey, I knew from God that this guy was my husband, but now we're broken up. So what do I do? Like I knew, I knew straight up a hundred percent God told me. And I'm like, okay, what do you say? Let's, let's talk through this. All right. We can talk through that, <clears throat> but let me finish my dream first. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. 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 So, th and this is what I mean. Like there are things to like press into. Like I had seen this, it was, I think I was awake during this, but I had this vision of like, I'm, walking down the aisle and I'm dating this guy, this Australian DJ, which I probably shouldn't have dated ever. But anyways, so I'm dating this guy and I'm walking down the aisle and I couldn't see his face. Like his face wasn't clear. And in that moment, it was like, I didn't fully know what that meant. You know, when he turned yeah. around and his face was blurry, but it was like, that's not my husband. You know what I mean? Mm. This guy that I'm with right now is not is not it one I sh again like I shouldn't have been dating him so there's some clarity there but um yeah I think there's something to little pictures like that like you you've had you've had well so no many. I literally had that exact same thing with a guy that well I had that with my ex fiance and you couldn't see his face I could the... not see his face at the end of the aisle and it was something see? that was there's... like really hard I mean but I didn't dream about it at night no I don't but think whenever that was during I the day. like pictured our wedding day I like could not imagine him at the end of it. And I didn't understand why. And I'd be like, that's just me being crazy. But literally I could not see him at the end of the aisle. And obviously so now that we're not, we're not, obviously I called it off, but it was this weird thing. And it's crazy because God has given me, like I have seen pictures of my wedding day and I still don't see the face, but I know that it's going to happen because like he had seen, he's given yeah. me other bits and pieces yeah. of it, which I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what God does. But the face is always blurry. Yeah. Except I did. This is crazy. I had a girl DM me, which I'm like holding very lightly to this. She told me she had a dream about me. And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, not going to tell you, but I feel like the Lord told me to tell you, you are going to marry someone with dark hair and dark facial hair. And I saw your wedding day. And I literally- Dark like, facial hair? Dark, like dark features, like dark facial hair, dark hair. And I'm just, I'm like, okay. So every time a blonde guy asks me out, which like never happens, I'm like, sorry, you ain't my husband. Just kidding. I'm not going there. Okay. But like, it is funny because I'm like, <laughs> like it's, it's like this weird thing where I'm like, Lord, is that like a clue? Because I feel like what God's doing in my own life is like, he's, I'm just like kind of going along for the ride. I'm like, God, you are so, if you saw my Instagram post a couple of days ago, weeks ago, whatever, I just was like, this is why I'm not praying for marriage in 32 because like, I'm so confident that God's going to do it. That like, yes, he knows, but he knows the desires of my heart. So I don't need to be like on the floor, like crying out to him because I feel like that is the one area, you know me, that I'm not like desperately seeking, but I just like trust God in that. But she did have that dream. She's like, I literally see you on your wedding day. And there's this, this man, he looks like this and he's at the end of the aisle. It's weird. It was weird. You never know. You never know. I think what, where we go wrong is like when, like, cause the scriptures say in first Corinthians that we see in part and we know in part. Mm -hmm. And so where we go wrong with these things is two things. One, we either hold to them like Bible and yes. get mad at God. If that, totally. instead of assuming, okay, I must have misheard. That's a problem. Like, cause that is true. Like you can hear things that are like okay I, I heard half yep. of it or I interpreted that wrongly yep and then we get mad at God when it's like no get mad at yourself or just know that like scriptures are clear like you see in part you know what totally. I mean you don't actually know the full picture and then celebrate the heck out of it if it's like no that was something that God gave me and the other thing we do is like we completely discount that all together I think there's this, been this separation of like spirit and bible and it's like that's not biblical you know yeah. what I mean there is holy spirit and there's the word of God and the two you know, go together perfectly and we don't have to negate one to honor the other. Totally. No. And I think there is that tension of like, I will, I'll hear that and be like, cool. I'm great. But I'm not going to sit here and say like, no, I mean, I, I was joking. If a blonde guy asked me out, I would say yes. <laughs> and if I was interested, the but I'm not like, have a chance. I had this, vi like this girl on Instagram sent me a DM and you're blonde and blue eyed. Sorry. Like that's craziness. But there is this, there is this piece where I'm like, okay, like, I'll hear that. I'll receive that, but I'm not going to cling to that as truth. But on the other side of it, we also see that we are called to cling to what is unseen. Like we are not called to cling to what is seen because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so that's great. 
I'll hear that. I'll receive that. But like my trust and my hope is in the Lord because he is the one that won't put me to shame. Like if I put my trust in him, I put my hope in him. He's not going to put me to shame, but like, no offense, a DM Instagram from Instagram. If I'm clinging to that to put my hope in, I could be put to shame very quickly. (laughs) Totally. In the same way with dreams though. You know what I mean? Like if I'm sitting here clinging to a dream I had in the middle of the night, that could be from the Lord, yes. But it also could be because I watched a romantic movie with my roommates before I went to bed and now I'm envisioning my wedding day. So I'm going to cling that God's promises are good. He is faithful. He loves me and he is for me. That's what I'm going to cling to. Not a dream that I had. And sometimes it does come to fruition. And like I've seen that even, this is kind of crazy. I feel like, if you've been following along, I've been talking a lot about having these like visions and all these, I don't even know if I like that word, but you mentioned imaginary prayer. What Imaginative prayer. Yeah. I don't don't know which way I land on that exact (laughs) language, but something that I've been clinging to is I feel like the Lord has been making different, not even promises, but just giving me pictures and visuals of different things. And I'm like, you know what? I am receiving that but I'm not going to say this is for sure what's going to happen because your highs are, your ways are higher than mine. Like my wisdom is literally God's foolishness as it says in scripture. But this was crazy last week. I was like, man, God, you spoke when I was in college that I was going to go through every type of eating disorder so that one day I could help every type of girl. And literally this week I was like, I didn't know then if you were going to keep your promise. I wasn't even at, yes, I thought that was you, but it was kind of like a, hope this is God telling me this because it's not 100% certain, you know what I mean? But it's 100% been true. Yeah. And so it is that tension of getting to hold to what you feel like the Lord has spoken to you. But there needs to be the tension of holding it lightly because once again, there is nowhere in scripture that says, Nicoletta Bradley, you will go through every type of eating disorder so that one day you can help every type of girl. So there is that tension. I don't know. What do you no, think? No, I think that's good. And I've I've had, I just remembered that I actually have had dreams that have like, I'll, I'll Wait, tell you that in a second. Oh my gosh, yes. But no, I've, I've definitely had pieces of God's voice like that, that, are, that would have been so clear that I can point back to, you yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, yes, 100% I knew that was God. And, and then here we are. And then there have been times where I'm like, did I mishear that? Totally. Or times where I'm like, okay, that was actually for someone else. And so this is where the dream comes in. But I'm going to tell you this first because I had something similar when I was in high school um, and I went to this church camp. And I remember having this experience with the Lord where I felt like God was saying, I'm going to use you to do something and it's going to be something big. And I had this overwhelming like tremble. Like I'm, I feel like, and I like talked to one of the counselors and it was kind of like nobody could enter into that space with me in this moment. She was like, cool. You know what I mean? And I just, I, that was one of the, my like first vivid memories of hearing God so clearly and being like, oh, holy, are you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know what yeah. to, I don't know how to respond to this or what to say, but I've never forgotten it. And then through my life, I've asked like, what is the something big? You know what I mean? And, and held that loosely of like big in my eyes might look different than what God has decided. And I'm just like open hand, you know what I mean? I'm not kind of like. And this is, this is why this matters. I'm not taking that saying like, I have this higher calling than everyone else in life and whatever. Like if I was going to take that and say, this is for my glory, then that's not from the Lord. You know what I mean? Or I'm completely responding improperly, you know? But if I'm going to take that and be like, here I am, God. And if I'm going to let that create a fear and a reverence to say, I need to be careful of the things of the world. Yeah. And I need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is biblical. And that's leading me closer to the truth. And that's something really, really good. So anyways, I remember things like that. And then I remember another time at the same church camp where. It's like a, like a charismatic church camp. No, it's my friend Clayton had a church camp. We should have him on the. Yeah. And it was not like it had nothing to do with. He wasn't saying, hey, have visions or anything like that. Like there yeah. was nothing no, but this was not, and I grew up in like the Southern Bible, like this was not a thing. Yeah. Like people didn't talk in tongues. Like there was no, there was like charismania wasn't there or any kind of charismatic thing wasn't there. So it was just literally like, to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, this just yeah. hit me like a ton of wave, like a ton of bricks. And I know this is God. <laughs> and so, um, at the same church camp, again, no one was prophesying over me or anything like that. I, this was in college though. Um, and like I had revisited at night that the public, it was open to the public, irrelevant details. 
Um, but I remember God telling me like the waves are coming. How are you going to respond? The waves are coming. How are you going to respond? The waves are coming. How are you going to respond? And then that was the semester. Like I went back to college and like we just said on our drinking episode, I went back to college and that's when I like had a choice to make and, and lost my job for drinking and lying about it. And like the waves were coming, the waves were a result of my own foolish choices. And it was almost like a warning that God gave me that I didn't really listen to. Yeah. But he also is kind of like this moment of like him knowing that I was going to make the wrong choice and then giving me the choice to respond to that afterwards. You know, like, what are you going to do after that? So anyways, but here's what I was going to say. Like sometimes the dreams that I've had, like the first time I thought I was pregnant was my sister was pregnant. Wow. I thought I was going to have my baby early, this baby early. Like I had a dream that I was like, but I don't really think, think that, but I had a dream that he came early at night. My sister calls me and says she's in preterm labor. This is uh-huh. active happening right now. Yeah. So anyways, I've, I've realized like there are dreams that, that end up being like for someone else, Totally. you know? Oh, that's happened to me with visions. Really? Like I literally, cause yeah. What, so what, uh, once again, follow me along. Silent and solitude rocks my world. And I've had visions that I've written out and been like, okay, God, like, what does this mean? Like, I don't even know. And oh, then, it happened with my miscarriage. Yes, yes. I mean, you remember that? Yes, I forgot. About, thank you. There we go. Perfect example. If you did not listen to the story of Laura's miscarriage, literally God reveals a vision that I had that I thought was for my other friend that I was really anxious about who just had a healthy baby, had no miscarriage. And then Laura told me on the podcast, she was having a miscarriage. And I was like, and then she goes, and I know it was a boy. And I was like, I literally had a vision about you and like saw like you mourning the loss of a son, but you were going to get pregnant quickly after. And then you did two weeks after literally two weeks later. Yeah. So it's real, but it's just really, once again, I think I love that you mentioned the tension of it all because it really is the whole, it's, it's like this black and white thing of either holding too firmly to the vision more than you're holding to your faith, more than you're holding to God's word, more than you're holding just God or so that's one thing, clean that. Or you just don't believe God's possible. You don't believe that God could do that. You don't think he wants to speak to you in that way. And that's really where the Lord in the last years has changed my perspective, especially after going through basically the institute of just kind of not really knowing where I landed and visions and gifts and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, like God is, he loves to speak to his children. And I think for me specifically, I am very visual. Mm-hmm. Like in the last year of disciplining myself in this act of silence and solitude and seeing like pictures come alive to me in a new way. I'm like, you have absolutely grown me in my walk with you. Like even this morning I had a vision and it was as silly as I saw myself walking in this field of lilies and I was like really content just walking and doing the thing. And I felt like I saw Jesus just come up to me and he was like, Hey, like if I care for the lilies of the field, how much more do I care for you? Like not one lily dies without me knowing about it. Therefore you don't need to fear anything about your future. You don't need to fear anything about it because I'm a God of knowledge. I'm a God who's in control and I'm a God who's so wildly for you. And if I care for a small thing, like a lily, what makes you think I don't care abundantly more for you? And then in the picture ended. And it's like, that is literally just making the gospel. I think it's in Matthew. Scripture, is yeah, it Matthew it's 6? in Matthew right. and Luke. Yeah. yeah, it just comes alive. And so that though is special to me. And so I also want people to also hear is that I think it's really easy to hear somebody else's experience and also make that Bible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just because the Lord gave me a vision of maybe my wedding day doesn't mean that you're going to get married. You know what I mean? And I think that's also this tension of going, oh my gosh, well, God did this for her. So that means God's going to do that for me. It's like, no, that was an intimate moment with me and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he wants to show you something different. He also wants to show you something better. But are you, are you seeking him? He he, says, if those who seek me, find me. When you find, when you pursue me with your whole heart. I don't know. No, this is good. This is good. And he might speak to you differently. I think so. Okay. Let's keep going on this conversation because this is not what we plan to talk about at all. But God be taking our microphone and he goes, you going in this direction, girl. And I said, okay, God, gooky gang. I'm not pumped about this. I like love this stuff. I feel like that should be a whole (laughs) bit. You know what I mean? Drinking my electrolytes in the sweatsuit. Let me ask y'all this. Do y'all want a Patreon? Because we've had some bits in our last recordings where we've been like, Literally. oh, this is recording. And <laughs> we have like insane bloopers that like is worth $5 a month. I know. <laughs> Dude, do y'all want a Patreon? Let us know in the comments <laughs> yeah. because 
we'll you make it happen. It. If you want it, Laura, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably give people some clarity on our roles here because yeah. people ask me all that stuff a lot. But anyways, um, so uh, in the church in general, you have you have like a charismatic movement. Yes. And um, then you have like Bible churches. Yes. And uh, where we go wrong is like sometimes the Bible churches. Um, Which I've heard is Jesus, God, and the Holy Bible. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Like Ooh, literally. That it's be like, convicting. No, you know it is. What I mean? It's like Jesus, God, and the Holy Bible. There's no spirit. You know what I mean? And that's like yeah. how they live. Keep going. Yeah. And, and they would probably fall under like the category that's called cessationist. Yes. Of like when you're separating out, does God still interact with his people in the way that he did in the book of Acts, for example? Um, flaming tongues of fire and people are speaking known languages, you know what I mean? That, that they didn't actually speak. And then other people are hearing and making professions of faith because they're like, you don't even speak that language and you're professing the gospel. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Totally. And so some people over here in this category, cessationist is just, a, a, it's a word that means stop. Like it stopped. It's seized. Yep. You know what I mean? As in God doesn't ever interact that way with his people anymore. And this can apply to all the like spiritual gifts or some of the stuff that we consider more like Holy Spirit driven. Um, and then there's like people on the other end of the spectrum who can almost make it seem like you're a JV Christian if you don't have this the gift, gift or the that spirit. if you don't have the gift of tongues, if you're yes. not prophesying over people. And so um, there's so many things in this conversation in general that yeah. we can talk about. But um, for that one specifically, here is a, uh, there's a really well-known church in Dallas who um, will teach incorrectly that you have two points to your testimony Yeah, where it's like you come to know Jesus, and then later in your life, you get the Holy Spirit. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they take scripture out of context, and yep. we can, yeah, anyways, they take scripture out of context, but, which I believe that scripture basically is saying that the they weren't actually saved before, and so they had heard of Jesus, they had known without knowing Jesus, you know, but you need to know that the moment you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, the scriptures say. It is very clear throughout the Bible the moment of salvation, you have the Holy Spirit. You are not more than or less than for some, you know, gift that other people might might have or might not have. And so you have a, you can still grow in your testimony and you can still have experiences with God that are life changing after the point of salvation. But you need to know that the moment you are saved, you are marked with the Holy Spirit, you are saved, you cannot lose your salvation. If you if you had a true salvation experience. And that's Ephesians. I just want to make sure we add scripture to that, but that's Ephesians 1 13. And it literally says in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and as a result, believed in him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy spirit. The one promised by Christ as owned and protected by God. That's literally saying when you heard the, the truth, believed it, you were stamped. And when you are stamped, that's not just, you know, like slapped, you were stamped, you were sealed. And that is like so critical for people to know because you're so right. We are in this, I don't know, just in life right now, there's so much conflict with the church. Like what's true, what's not true. And it's just as that when you believe that Jesus died and rose again, it literally says you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The old is gone and the new has come. And it's just like, I just hate that. I just hate that we are taking the most beautiful gift, the most beautiful message of salvation, and we are twisting it. And we've made it honestly like a war. Mm -hmm. Like we, and we're seeing, we're dealing with these two churches, like what you're saying, we're either you're not saved. And if you are saved, you're doing these things or like the spirit isn't alive, it's dead, whatever. And we're just in conflict when, why can't we just be about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we believe that a God is so good that he died and loves us and wants to speak to us? And that once again, in the last two years, I've done such a deep dive on hearing God's voice. And the main thing is that we have a God who loves us and wants to speak to us. Mm -hmm. But he speaks in a small, still voice. And I think, yeah, but keep going. Which is from saying. scripture. Exactly. It's from an Elijah, you yep. know. 
he spoke to him. He kept expecting God to speak in the the big like thunderstorm and all these big ways. And it was when he kind of went silently into the cave, I believe. He heard a still small voice and that's where you get that term yeah so I think yeah I think you're so spot on and it doesn't have to be this big conflict and this big war and there is also like rightfully so you know one is almost birthed out of the other like they see the dangers over here and then swing the pendulum yes all the way the other way and it's like okay there actually is a healthy middle ground yeah. of like, hey, I'm open and I'm also cautious, but I'm not just going to say I'm open. I'm going to genuinely be open. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. And I'm going to genuinely seek out because I want everything that God has to offer me. You know what I mean? And um, it is right to say like, hey, it's dangerous to believe that you don't get the Holy Spirit till later because you are making people feel less than. You're making people doubt their salvation. You know what I mean? That is really, really dangerous. Um, You're spot on, Nicoletta, to bring up scriptures that that say the old is made new. It's death to life in a moment. You, even if you, you know, trusted Christ at a young age and don't remember when you were saved, there was a moment that the Holy Spirit entered you. It was, you were dead and now you're alive. It happened in a moment. You know what I mean? Whether or not you remember it, there was a moment. Yep. And so anyways, there really is that. And so there are dangers there. There are dangers too to like, um, for example, trusting in visions, yeah, making them ultimate when they yes. go against God's word. I've heard countless stories of people who are like, God told me, t- I mean, Mormonism is like really hot right now. The secret lives of Mormon wives, yeah. you know what I mean? Mormonism is really hot right now. Some, some Mormons have gotten really offended by our show. Um, who used to listen and, um, you know, Joseph was Joseph Smith had a dream and all of a sudden God told him all these things that he hadn't revealed in scripture. Yeah. Even though the scripture says, do not add to these words. Now we have the Mormon Bible created saying like, okay, listen to this dream. I'm going to put this in line also with scripture and now we're talking about getting planets after years, like stuff that's that's so wildly contradictory to scripture. Yeah. And I've had this conversation with a Mormon friend before of like, hey, how do you reconcile that the Holy Bible, because you say you believe in that, says do not add to these words. Yet this entire other book was created adding to these words that is like, you know, supposed to be put in level with the Bible. Anyway, so that's an example of like, hey, there was a vision, there was a dream that was followed wholeheartedly and it contradicts scripture. God will never contradict himself, period, end of story. He will never contradict himself. Yeah, and that's really truly where, quote unquote, these visions I've been getting, like it is wild, the scripture that comes to mind when the Lord gives me these pictures. Like it is literally like, I will read like, Man, I wish I had time just to read some of them over y'all and just to be like, man, like he gave me a picture to the scripture that I've known my whole life, but he put me in it. And I was like, Good. that makes so much sense now. And so for me, and once again, it, I mean, First Corinthians 14, it says that we are eagerly to desire spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. And it even says, especially the gift of prophecy, which I have a bit on that, but we are to ask God for the spiritual gifts and spiritual gifts are wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, discerning between the spirit, speaking in tongue, interpretations of tongue. Like there's so many gifts. And he literally says, asks, he says, ask for them. And I know for me, so can I give a little like, can you go down the prophecy route for a second? Yeah, I want to. Okay. I have a couple that I want to share. Okay, because I'm now on the prophecy team at my, at my church. So I just took a five-week class at my church to be on the prophetic team at my church. And let me just say something really quick. <laughs> yes. This is a little bit scandy. Yes, like this, this is, is scandalous. Yes, it is. To like our background, like yes. where we were raised. Yes. And so there's no disrespect. There is like open dialogue. You know what I mean? Totally. But this is this is a little bit this scandalous. Is scandy. This Even is though scandy. they would say it might not be scandalous. No, like no, this no. is scandy. No, if you told me two years ago that I would be like, I didn't believe in prophecy two years ago. Like I believed that prophecy was dead. So I then took this class because I'm kind of sitting here going, 
I don't really know where I land because I feel like I'm very black and white. So it's either it is dead and should never believe in it, or you are, or I've been prophesied over in charismatic churches. And I'm like, you are Looney Tunes, like you are whack. <laughs> and I've had prophetic words, and I'm like, you are wrong. Yeah, that is inappropriate. Yeah, correct. So that's really, I want you to hear me loud and clear. That is where I stood. I was like, prophecy is dead, and the people that prophesy are weirdos. So when my class or when my church offered this prophecy class, and lately I've been experiencing these visuals from the Lord, I'm like, all right, well, I, I want to learn. I might as well learn so I actually have an opinion rather than swinging black and white. So I took this class. And basically what this class taught me in five weeks was that prophecy, another word for it, is just a word of encouragement from the Lord. And we are called to build up our brothers in Christ. And so how this works, I know some of you guys are going to be like, this is craziness. And I would really challenge you, come to, I go to Paradox Church in Fort Worth. I believe in this church. We are biblically sound. We are biblically based and what we did was that we looked at the scriptures and I, I wish I had the sheet there's so much about this and it was so crazy to open up the word and be like I didn't know that I was talking about prophecy I didn't know that was okay like I had no idea and literally so what we do is after the service on Sundays we have come to the left of the stage and we have a prophetic team what happens we have three people on the team so we have three people in three teams okay so I'm with two people a person will walk up and you're not allowed to tell us anything about your life. You're not allowed to dump your problems on us. We literally just say, hey, this is how we work. We record everything we're about to say and we go before the Lord on your behalf and say, God, give me a word of encouragement that you want this person to hear. And so we sit there and we pray over them and we just sit in silence, literally what I do in my closet. And we sit there for a minute and we just go, okay. And we go, hey, like what I got was I saw this. I saw you doing this and this is this. And then another girl will be like, I honestly just got the word blank or I, the scripture that kept coming to mind was this. And then we just go, did any of that resonate with you? And we claim we're not prophets. We don't know if we're spot on. We don't claim to be Bible, but like, this is what we, we are a body of believers who want to encourage the saints. So we want to go before the throne room in your behalf. And there has been the craziest things. I've received prophetic words. Um, I've spoken prophetic words. And we have seen people break down in tears. Like, I had a girl. This is crazy. I literally was like, man, I just, I don't know why, but I see you in the middle of the ocean, and you are desperately searching for a life raft, and you can't find it. And then I felt like the scripture that came to mind was, even though the um, winds and the waves roar, you don't need to fear. Oh, gosh, um, I think it's Isaiah. I can't remember right now. But it came to me at the moment. And this girl started breaking down. She goes, I had that vision 10 years ago. I've literally, God has given me that picture and you just gave language to it. And I was like, what? And it was just like, I had no idea who this girl was. No idea who this girl was. And then literally another woman, she came up to me and, she, and I was in a yellow sweatshirt. And this was when we were going through the training and she was my partner. So we were just practicing on each other, going before the Lord on behalf. And she goes, I, okay, I'm really sorry. Like, I had a dream about you last night. Like, I had a dream of a blonde girl in a yellow sweatshirt with white tennis shoes. And I was in a yellow sweatshirt in white tennis shoes. And she goes, and I saw you praying in your closet, which is like what I do all the time. And she goes, and I feel like I'm just supposed to tell you that God is with you and he's going to bring clarity to what you're praying about. Wow. And that's all I have. And like, these are the things that are happening. And so I say all that to say, when... I've joined this church, so I'm, I'm going on a rant, but this is very new to me. But in the church that I'm now part of, I think we just started making, we stopped giving the word prophecy power because I feel like the word prophecy is where we'd give all the power and all mm -hmm. the- like, I was going to say, prophecy. I was going to mention this after you're done. This yeah. is good. It's and good. we just debunked it to what if we just encouraged people? Exactly. We got a word from the Lord and we encouraged our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it is powerful. Like people have spoken words over me that have changed my life. Like two weeks ago, I got a word and this girl says, all I'm hearing is um, clarity apart from Christ is futile. Mm -hmm. And what the Lord has said to me daily, he goes, you know what clarity is like from me? And until you have clarity, everything you do is pointless. And I have not moved with anything business related until I have clarity. And he has given it time and time again. And every time that I think I'm supposed to do something, I've just stopped him and like, he hasn't given me clarity. And unless he gives me clarity, it is pointless. Anyways, I'm done. But like, 
I want, I would love to hear your thoughts because this is new to me, but it's firing me up because I feel like it's taken the two extremes to a middle ground in a really sweet way where I'm just seeing believers get to hear God's voice in a new way. And it, and it's really, really cool. And you hit the nail on the head. It's hearing God's voice, you know what I mean? And sharing and the scriptures have always been about that. And you, you see, um, in scriptures like that, the spiritual gifts were for the edifying of the church. Yes. And so, Red flag number one is if people are just using them to edify themselves. Yes. There's a, there's, you know, there are false prophets that come up. Totally. And the scripture is very clear about that as well. They're going to be false prophets. If they're coming saying, I'm the new Messiah, they're a false prophet. You know what I mean? Like, God gave you this vision. Okay. Um, I want to take what you said as an example. Go for it. Um, because... For example, that was a word specific to to the blonde girl in the closet. Yeah. And where the danger and the excitement. So the danger is taking that and applying it to everyone. Everyone and making it Bible. And making it Bible. Yes. So it's like, because God is saying, Nicoletta, I don't want you to take a step without clarity. That doesn't mean the guy who's wrestling if he should break up with his girlfriend, you know what I mean? Yes. Says, I have to break up with her because I don't have clarity. You know what yes. I mean? When... God might be asking you to exercise faith exactly. when there is no clarity. And there really is like biblical wisdom in Ecclesiastes 11, for example, that, that tells you to rely on knowledge at some point. And it says, cast your bread upon the waters and see what returns for you don't know which one will be successful this or that. And so there's another piece of logic and wisdom that says like, Hey, Unless you're hearing from me, like sometimes you just have to make decisions and trust totally. that I'm going to bless one or break one. Like you always pray, bless it or break it. And you just don't know the way of the Lord. You don't know the way of the Lord in, in a mother's womb. Like the scripture is clear about that. Ecclesiastes 11. Again, sometimes you just take steps and you see what happens. And sometimes God gives you this like moment of like, hey, you're not supposed to move until you have yes. clarity. In this season. I, I'm going to troll you for a second. No, Can please? I keep trolling Come you? Come on, troll me. Because I've on. pushed back on this like four times. And, you know, you've said recently like um, this line about like when God's in it, it's seamless. And I'm like, okay, I need to tell Nicoletta. I literally wrote a note on my phone. I need to tell Nicoletta to be, care be careful not to apply that to everyone. Hmm. Because for you in your experience... God has been saying, like, it's going to be seamless, the things that I'm in. Good. For other people, especially for what I'm learning right now, the Lord has been telling me to not take no for an answer. Basically, everything he's saying that he's in. That's good. For me, is like, it's going to not be seamless. And you think about, you know, all the times in scripture where it's like Joseph's life. It, was, it wasn't seamless at all. And he had a very clear picture from the Lord. You know? Yeah. But then he was in prison. He was wrongly accused. He was forgotten. It wasn't seamless at all. And God still brought the picture, but he was mm. using all of that stuff. You know, there are other times in scripture where it's like they go up to the promised land. They're told to conquer the promised land. They go in and they're like, we're scared. It's, they're too, the fruits are too big. Like the fruits are the size of our heads. You know what I mean? And we get scared and now we're sent wandering and it's, a little bit of a different example because that was because of their fear. Um, they could have still conquered the promised land, but in general, so you just have to take it and say, okay, what is for me? Yeah. And what is for everyone? You know what I mean? Cause that might apply to someone, but the danger to an untrained ear to somebody who's like, Hey, I actually don't know the scriptures well enough. And I'm listening to these young leaders, which if you are a young leader, you, you like hear this you and let it be let held you, to a higher standard. Yes. And let it make you tremble Yeah, because you are responsible for what people are hearing. And I know we're all going to stumble. We're not going to hit the nail on the head. We're going to be misunderstood. We're all growing and learning as well. But there are a lot of people fighting for microphones right now. And, um, you you might not be ready for the microphone, not because of your own self, but because of how people are going to interpret some of the things that you say. So you just really have to be so, so careful. The scriptures say in James. It literally says First Timothy. It talks about 
1 Timothy 3, leaders must live according to higher standards because they are setting an example. James 3, 1, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Yes. So that's, I was literally like, I had a note in my phone and this is why what you've done really well is like you surround yourself and I know you want that feedback back. You know what I mean? Totally. And I know you want me to stay in the ring with you and be like, Nicoletta, here's why you can't keep saying this without the caveat because yeah, people good. are hearing that thinking, that's also for me. Like, so God must not be in this relationship or God must not be in this thing because it's hard. But guess what? God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and and say, let my people go. And Pharaoh's going to say no. You know yeah. what I mean? And then he told him to keep going back. Yep. And so like, they're just, so you just have to know, okay, here's how people are going to perceive what I'm saying. But that doesn't negate my experience. And, and that doesn't negate like, hey, God is telling me in this moment that when I'm in it, it's going to be seamless. So stop striving. And See, here's and the takeaway. The kicker. That's the takeaway. Yes. But people aren't hearing you say yep, the, the striving stop striving piece. part. Yes. But I, I knew that for you because I know you. Like, I yeah. knew that the takeaway for you so was like, stop trying to take hold of things. You know what I mean? Just wait for his timing. You yes. know what I mean? Stop striving. Yeah. So anyways. No, that's so good because you're so right. Because I, I ha like, I believe that because my whole life is striving. My whole life is, you want something, get it. You get, like, mm -hmm. charge the hill. Tunnel vision. Like, my friends joke around. They're like, when Nicoletta wants something, she gets so hyper-focused on it. It's like, everything else blurs out of my lane. And I'm like, <laughs> we are charging the hill. We are making this happen. Get out of my way. I will not be interrupted. But in that, the Lord is like, you need to sit back, homegirl, and trust that I can do it. And when I... Like, I want to prove to you in this season that you don't need to strive to make the things happen that I've called you to. But rather, when I am in things with you, I orchestrate, I lead, I make it happen. And when you are following me, things are going to be seamless. Because that's a lesson I need to learn. Because I'm sitting here going, if God's not going to do it, no, if someone's not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I know God's not going to do it, so I'm going to take control. And the Lord's like, no, 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 baby girl, slow down. Like, let me show you that I will guide you with my righteous right hand. And it literally, like, righteous right hand, that means comfort. That means strength. That means security. And the Lord's, like, literally saying, grab my hand, and I will show you strength. I will show you security. I will show you comfort. And I will show you that I can do abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. What if you didn't have to do it? Because I'm like, no, if Noble goes anywhere, it's going to be because I had to do it. And the Lord's like, but what if you didn't? Mm -hmm. Like, what if in this season, like, my whole life is just, yeah, if you want to get married, you need to lose the weight. If you want to get married, you need to make sure you're seen. If you want to get married, you better be the hottest and the best and the whatever. And the Lord's like, what if you weren't? Like, what if I, like, what if there's a God story in this? Yeah. And you don't have to do it. And that is what he's been showing me in visions. It's been these pictures of me just like following the Lord and people are joined into my path. And so for me in this season, you're spot on. God's like, when I'm in it, I'm going to show you that it's seamless because it's me who gets the glory. It is my grace that's sufficient for you. It is my power that makes things happen. And Nicoletta, I let things happen with you and through you, but it's never about you and it's not about your strength. And so I love that you called me out on that because that is true. And I think that is wisdom, yes, to approach even our podcast, but even to approach TikTok. Like, make sure you're understanding the language. Push back on things that I say. Like, don't just believe like, well, Nicoletta said that everything is seamless. It's like, test it. DM me. Let me communicate this effectively and then whatever you are on tiktok make sure it lines up with scripture so if it doesn't line up with scripture it might not be true and if you are a young communicator you know a lot of people have platforms now who aren't ready for them that's okay like some of you are going to grow publicly but just know like have the fear of god like tremble because you have a responsibility to shepherd the people's hearts and there is no greater responsibility that God could give you than the people's hearts. And if the people are loving you and trusting you and listening to what you say, you better be careful. That shouldn't make you stay silent. Just let it make you fear God, yeah. you know, and tremble and ask, invite correction, invite pushback. And I, one of the things I love that you do, Nicoletta, is that, you know, you'll text me things and be like, is this, is there something I'm missing that's not biblical here? You know? Yeah. Or if somebody comments, you will decide who gets a voice. You've chosen who gets a voice because you could just crumble saying like, 
you're like, no, I actually think this is true and this is biblical and people are saying all these crazy things. And there have been times I've been like, no, you're fine. You know what I mean? That, that completely lines up with scripture. You know what I mean? Or there are times where I'm like, just add this much more context. Totally. You know what I mean? And there's times where I just don't post it. Yeah. I mean, you've told me like, don't post it. I'm like, great. Thank you. Yeah. Cause I need, I need, I need help. Like I'm not like, I love Jesus and all I want to do is make his name known, but it doesn't mean that I'm always right. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, call me out. And if I'm not right, I just won't post it. Like, so <laughs> everything I do post, like I'm getting feedback on everything I'm posting on Instagram. Cause I want to make sure to the best of my knowledge, it's encouraging and helping and building the body of Christ up. Um, and this isn't to cripple anybody to no. say like, don't speak because guess what? People are going to misunderstand. People are going to misinterpret. And there are some things where it's like, I mean, I've been taken out of context before. It's, there's some things where it's like, okay, well, just because you might take that out of context doesn't mean I'm not going to say it. Cause I'm actually talking to this person like, for, okay. But I was thinking through this, for example, when I said I posted a video the other day or caller Holy posted it, I was like, you have the Holy spirit in you. We still posted that, but I'm thinking in my head, some people listening to this video actually don't have the Holy Spirit in them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're actually not believers. But there's a there's a balance, you know what I mean? Totally. To, to toe the line of like, okay, I'm not going to not post that because it's only talking to believers. I might communicate, you know, whatever, but figuring out what is it time for and knowing. So, but it, the fact that I'm like thinking like that, totally. that's how we should all be thinking is like, thinking critically how are people going to perceive this what could be the not for my own glory but out of a reverence for the word of god for the spirit of god and for the person of jesus christ out of a reference for god i'm going to um tremble and say how can i best shepherd the hearts of the people and one of my favorite psalms i think it's psalm 73 uh, i need to find it because it's really really powerful and i need to remember Remember the reference again. David shepherded them with integrity integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. And so there's a shepherding piece where his heart was pure. There was integrity there. I'm not in this for my own glory. With integrity, I'm, I'm living the same life I'm asking you to live. And with skillful hands, I'm going to hone my craft. I'm going to learn God's word if I'm going to speak. You know what I mean? I'm going to be open to feedback. If I'm a heart player, I'm going to play to the best of my ability. You know? Yeah. With skillful hands, he led them. And so there was something about honing his skill of leadership. He had the gift of leadership, and he also had the skill to develop that he was not going to shy away from. Because it matters. Yeah. Honestly, one of my favorite things about Laura, and I've told you this a million times, is that I literally send everything to you first. Because I'm like, this girl knows like, I, I feel like I know my Bible, but, like, you know your Bible. Probably because you got, like, two years on me, you know. You <laughs> two years, years of, of life. <laughs> two years of knowledge, two years of Bible reading. But truly, I'm like, you are, I just look up to you so much in the way you know mm -hmm. scripture. Like, I mean, girls that I went to an event a couple weeks ago was like, I love your podcast because you and Laura know God's word. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And even as we're sitting here right now, I'm so grateful to have you as a partner because if it ain't for you, I'd probably be like, Everything is seamless that God's in. And like, <laughs> but like Laura gets to push back and be like, hey, I want to like shepherd this moment yeah. and clarify. And so you were just a really great teacher and leader. And I just love, like, I just, this podcast is great because you're on it. Like truly, oh, this podcast so is so much better with your wisdom. That's and so sweet. I'm just so grateful to have a podcast partner that actually can trust that you know your word. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Rather mm -hmm. than just shepherding out of, you saw a TikTok video and you're going to take what you saw. It's like, no, I literally read this this morning and that's why I'm going to say it. Mm. And I think that's what I hope that when you listen to Call Her Holy, you don't elevate me and Laura. You elevate God's word because that's the only thing that we want to relate relay to you guys. Like truly, we hope when you listen to Call Her Holy, it is in a small way contributing to you opening up your own Bible because to the best of your, to our ability, we care about your holiness. Mm -hmm. We care about you knowing God's word and hoping that through this podcast, you are actually realizing, man, like, I want to know God's word. Mm -hmm. Like if that's changing their perspective, that's changing their lives. And I just read it as a dusty old book. We hope that through this podcast, you want to open it up for yourself and know God. Cause man, mm -hmm. like there's nothing safer mm -hmm. than God's word. And I feel so protected 
in knowing God's voice better because I'm in scripture, because I pray, because I practice the disciplines. Um, but you just set a really sweet example. And what this woman says, like, trust it because she knows God. And so sweet. there's like, it's just really cool because it says that those who look upon the face of the Lord, their faces are radiant and they're never covered in shame. And I think it's 34, five, Psalm 34, five. And it's just that picture of, man, there is something powerful when I look at women like you, I'm like, you're just radiant. And that's mm. because you know God. Mm. And that makes you um, powerful and effective. And it's really great to be here. Well, I'll, now I'll encourage you. Oh, girl. Because no, I've no. said this before, too. And I know this is, what, this is not what you were fishing for. Um, but, like, I have said this recently to you and I think to other people. Like, when Nicoletta tells me, like, I, this is a God tap. I listen. You know what I mean? Because you are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Like you are so sensitive in a time and space where I feel like my head is clouded and muddy. Sometimes I, I mean, I rely on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I'm like, God, this is such a great match. I'm so thankful because I, I haven't, you know, I've been, my mind has been taken up. You know, yeah. there's so many demands on my mental space and my energy. And I know yours too. You have family, baby. But there's, you, you know what I mean? When you get home, I'm not getting to go in my closet and be with the Lord for hours. Yeah. And, at, and at nighttime, after my daughter's down, I'm making decisions, you know, left or right. What, is it time to rest? Is it time to work on Call Her Holy stuff? Or is it time to um, get in the Word? Yeah. You know, what is it time for? And you can't do all three of those. And so anyways... Um, or is it time to spend time with my husband? So it's like, you're just kind of constantly, there's stuff filling, filling my mind. And then it's like, okay, now I also have three friends going through crisis right now. So anyways, I feel, I feel so confident because I know you approach the throne of God and it's such a gift to me, Nicoletta. So I'm really thankful not to encourage you just cause you encourage me. That's not what I'm doing, but just say it publicly because <laughs> I think it's powerful and I think it can give people an example of like, Hey, this matters. Nicoletta and I looked at each other. It was your birthday. And we both acknowledged, like, we actually don't get a lot of words of affirmation. You know what I mean? Okay. And this is not a call to, like, flood our DMs. <laughs> like, thank you for that. But, like, there's something special when the people who know you best, when the people who are walking closely with you and think good things about you go out of their way to say them. So if you're holding on to something positive that you think about someone. Say it. Say it. Yes. You know what I mean? Don't just think it behind their back. Say it to their face because they might need it. And that might be the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you that person needs this word. And you can say, take it or leave it. But I'm going to encourage you just to bring it full circle. I'm going to encourage you that this is something that I've seen in you and I really admire you. Shoot him a text right now. Yeah. You know, we're literally called to build up the yeah. body of Christ. We are called to build up. And I've just started a trend of like, if I think it, I say it. I think you look pretty, I'm going to say it. I think that's the cool thing about you, I'm going to say it. Like, it's just, what if we started cultivating that culture? And so if you're listening to this, it's right some now. People are, some people are like, listen, y'all don't want me to say the things that I be thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Use discernment. Yeah, please don't DM me, though. I like, I can't handle too, too many DMs. You're so kind. Thank you for all your encouragement. But, like, if you're thinking of a no, friend I'm right now. No, I'm saying, like, people be thinking, like, oh, this girl stank or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, hold back. Okay. <laughs> Use honestly, discernment. Though, if I stink, tell me. Like, I'm, like, so far. I always have my roommates. I'm like, Where's the hair on my face that no one's telling me? That's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, totally. you know, you've met those people. You're totally. like, there's that big old hair on your chin. And I'm like, do I tell you? Because I'm like, if you didn't tell me, I would be like, <laughs> not a real friend. You're fake. I am so mad. It's uh, like kids, kids just stick it to you. You know yes. what I mean? They'll make you feel so insecure because they're like, what's that on your face? <laughs> yeah. It's a pimple. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a whitehead, child. <laughs> no, every time my sister comes Why do you down from London, I'm like, scan my body. Scan my body. What's the things that I don't see? Oh. I'm like, is there a hair? Is there like, is there a back to it? Like what's working? Like what am I not seeing? Is that healthy for you? <laughs> No, she just shows like little imperfections, but every time she does, you're, she's like, you're clear. I'm like, praise God. You know? I'm like, do I have a mustache that I don't know about? Like, do I've got like a shadow? Like, you just don't know until you know. So real friends though, real friends say it. I'll say that. And so. I get these two, like, and Colby calls me out because like, you know, your hormone, little yeah. hormone hairs. They, I don't have it right now. I'm, fre I'm freshly, but I'll just She's have these two plucked. tiny little blonde chin. Like, this is so nasty. Don't be sending this to the boys. <laughs> 
I and mean, I'm like, it's so embarrassed by it, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. But like, two things happen. Like, Colby <laughs> always calls me out. Like, <laughs> he always calls me He's out. Like, I'm coming to get you. He's like, you plucking your chin here now? <laughs> We're like, you need a little, do a little pluck, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, Her. I look at him and I make this face that he loves, and I make this face, but I, you know, I do like a. Yeah. Mm. Um, because like, no, you don't see anything <laughs> and I'm a girl, you know, anyways, be beautiful. <laughs> but what's also funny is Oakley will like come and get my chin. She, she has this little bit where she pretends like, oh, you're a good puppy and she'll pat your head and catch a treat little puppy. Oh, you're a good puppy. And so yeah. anyways, and then she'll grab my chin, but she always comes over to the little two hairs that are sometimes there and she'll just like rub the little hairs and I'm like, I oh you. my God. <laughs> I gotta do something about this immediately. Can I leave this moment? I love you, but I need to leave this moment and take care of this really quickly. <laughs> so you've got blind spots. I literally just bought a magnifying mirror for my like my asked for my mom for my birthday and magnifying mirror because I was like, I need to be able to see all the things on my face. I'm always nervous. <laughs> Anyways, this is not what this episode is about, but <laughs> <gasps> Laura, wrap us up. I feel like we you were saying days. something and I totally derailed <laughs> no, I you. I don't know what I was saying, but man, like I think my biggest encouragement y'all is go scour the scriptures. Like don't just believe what we say. Like the things that I am now convinced of is because I scoured the scriptures on prophecy. And I will say this. I went through a church program, a church that I love and adore. They did not believe in prophecy. And so therefore I left the program and believed not in prophecy. And, but it was when I devoured the scriptures that I decided I do believe in prophecy because I changed the language of what I believed in, but it took me getting time with God, me devouring scriptures to figure out where I landed. And so that's really what I want you guys to take from this because you are never going to, we live in a culture that's divided. You're not going to hear, you're going to hear different things every day that visions are good, visions are bad, tongues are good, tongues are demonic. Like you're never going to know where you land unless you you go to the throne of grace. You open up God's word. It says that God's word is a double-edged sword and it will give you clarity if you ask. And, and so- And here's, you have freedom to say, here's where I land right now. Exactly. And, and okay, another call and all this, because there's so much more that we can talk about with all this. 100%. Like even the purpose of a prophet in scripture and knowing like, hey, prophets- were to foretell something coming totally. and forth tell like there were two different roles and we can get into all of that a different episode but um prophets in the bible lost their head if they're if they prophesied something and it was incorrect so i yeah. love that you and your church are saying hey we're not saying we're claiming to be prophets but i think this is what god told me you know what i mean and it's a yeah. word of encouragement for you exactly versus like Hey, this man is your future and, and you have to marry, you will marry him. You know what I mean? That's that you can hurt people a lot. And are you willing to lose your head for that? So just have, again, it comes back to a fear and reverence of the Lord. Um, another thing that I'll just say quickly to shepherd around this. So you can, you have the freedom to say, here's where I land right now. I love that. Here's where I land today. Um, in everything that's like a question mark in scripture, you can find people who love Jesus who land in different buckets, yes. if you will, yep. Yep. and know what those buckets are and why. That way you can kind of challenge the way that you think and then be really prayerful and search the scriptures and say, like, here's, yeah. where, here's what I believe right now and why. And I'm open to being wrong about this. And then the other thing I would just say is that keep the main thing the main thing. I was literally yeah. about to say that. I'm so glad you said that. Keep yeah, going. because like we just don't need a division in the church. And, we don't. and the scripture is clear about that. There are entire chapters of the Bible written. I mean, first Corinthians, yeah. second Corinthians, it's like correction and division. Yeah. Like it's he's addressing division in the church. And um that was just never God's intention with with not making things black and white. Yeah. His intention was for us to seek him and to have yeah. a humility, kind of like Tower of Babel where he scattered totally. everyone. You have different languages. You thought you could do it by yourselves, you know, and now I'm going to make, I'm going to scatter your tongues. Now you're all speaking a little bit of a different language and yeah. communication is a lot harder and you are reminded that you need me and that's a mercy. Yeah. So anyways, in all of this, it's like, um, Acts 4.32 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, and all the believers were one in heart and mind. And like, how beautiful is it? It's awesome. If we come together as a church and say like, hey, you might not believe the same thing as this, but we're aligned on the main things, yeah. you know, and, and we're going to be one in heart and mind and I'm on your team and I'm going to caution you and I'm going to speak up 
if there are things that you're, I think you're leading people astray, but I'm also trust that you have the Holy Spirit in you yeah. and you have the word of God in front of you and you have people in your life correcting you. Come on. Here we are. We are one in heart and mind. Yeah. And Proverbs 3, 3 says that love and faithfulness bind around your neck, write it on your heart and you will win the favor of man and of God. And I feel like what that verse just really has captured for me in the last few months of meditating on that is just, man, we're just called to love people, love God and be faithful. Mm. And that's it. And we get so stuck in the mud when God is just like, man, love me, love others, be faithful. And one day we are going to be at the throne of grace and we're going to forget all about this because we're going to be so engulfed with God's glory. And we're going to regret the times that we wasted arguing and argue, over yeah. silly Gosh, topics like yeah. this. Love God, love others, be faithful. And and open and be open to the dialogue. Like exactly. it's, it's, it's important because God says, says it. It's just not ultimate. It's not ultimate. Ah. Uh, I love that. I'm so love encouraged you so by much. you guys. And y'all, love y'all. If you have feedback, ask questions in DMs yeah. rather than coming at us in DMs <laughs> because this is a touchy t- topic. I know there's going to be a lot of opinions, mm. but I would love if you have a question, ask the question. Don't just attack us because we're open to dialogue. We might see, and God only knows how bad I am at DMs, but we would love to dialogue with you, but we'd also love you to scripture and hopefully point you in direction where you get to explore what you think. Um, But as always, thank you for listening. We are so grateful. Thank you for being in our corner, and we will talk to you soon.